Pass it. Hey everybody, Dr. O. In this review, we're going to cover bone as a tissue. We'll cover the axial and appendicular skeletons in separate videos, but we're just going to talk about bone as a tissue. So that's why we didn't cover it really in our histology or tissue section. Okay, let's dive right in. Uh, know the key differences between the epiphysis, diaphysis, and metaphysis. So if you're looking at a typical long bone, the shaft of that bone is going to be called the diaphysis. So the shaft of the bone is the diaphysis. The ends of the bones that actually articulate with other bones and form jo joints, they're going to be the epiphysis. And the metaphysis, that's going to be where they come together. Now, in an adult, once you've reached skeletal maturity and all your growth plates are closed, the metaphysis really doesn't matter that much because it's been the cartilage that used to be there in that growth plate is replaced by bone. But the metaphysis this is a very important in developing bones that are still growing because that is where that growth plate is. So diaphysis is the shaft, the ends of the bones are the epiphyses, and then that junction between that was significant until you reach skeletal maturity, which might be around 20, as late as 23, is the metaphysis. All right, what, no, the difference between compact and spongy bones. Here's like, what I like to say about these, you know, a real simple view, is compact bone is what makes your bone real rigid. Uh, strong and rigid. Spongy bone is what makes it more flexible. So spongy bone, it'll, it, you can distribute weight or the transfer of weight um, or impact. Let's say you're running. Spongy bone can distribute that weight throughout the spongy bone because of its meshwork appearance. Compact bone is just real rigid. So you need both. You need a combination of both. You want, um, because bones that don't bend at all break. If bone is, there's a disease called osteogenesis imperfecta where the bones are way too rigid and they're almost like glass. They just, they're so rigid they just snap. So you want bones that are strong. That comes from compact bone. You want bones that also will, will transfer weight and distribute forces. That comes from spongy bone. Spongy bone also makes sure your bones aren't too heavy. All right, uh, review your bone marking terms. So this is going to be, um, you know, just... Um, like, a, like tuberosities versus I have foramen, I have process here, you have condyles, epicondyles. I won't go all, through all those, but when you're learning the bones, when you're learning the bone markings, the, uh, uh, the parts of bones, that's when those terms are important. Now, I do recommend spending some time um, understanding what those words are. That way, if, I, if you're asked a question about the um, external auditory foramen, well, at least you know it's a hole, right? So it can help you, or a hole or a tunnel, so it can, it can help you figure these things out. So I would just focus on learning those terms and reviewing them as you learn your superficial bone markings. So why do your bones, your bones have, just a big picture though, your bones have holes so that tendon, mainly nerves and blood vessels and other things can, can go through them. Um, why do bull, bones have tuberosities and tubercles, all these bumps and lumps? That's where muscles attach. That's why you can tell by looking at a skeleton how muscular someone was by seeing how large these, these prominences are, these attachment points are. So that's why you can learn a lot from a skeleton. Is it male or female? How malnourished were the people? Because you can look for signs of, um, of infections like tuber you know, tuberculosis in the bones. Or you can look for signs that their growth was arrested because of malnutrition. So you can learn a lot by looking at, by looking at bones. And part of it is you can learn how muscular somebody was by looking at their, the lumps and bumps on their bones. Okay, the bone cells. This You see a um, mature bone cell here. It's called an osteocyte. But let me take you through all four of the bone cell types. Uh, we'll start, we'll go in order, because really there's only two. I don't want to confuse you, but there's four different names for two cells. So we start with our bone stem cell. It's called an osteoprogenitor cell. So that's, that's a stem cell. When you need new bone, now that stem cell can become, it can become fat and other things too. But when you need new bone, an osteoprogenitor cell is going to become an osteoblast. So here's how I remember that. Osteoblasts build bone. So an osteoprogenitor cell, a bone stem cell, becomes an osteoblast. And what it does is it basically builds bone all around it. But it's like, it's like getting stuck. You painted yourself into a corner. Have you ever heard that statement? Um, once this, with this osteoblast has encased itself in bone, it will now be a mature bone cell called an osteocyte. So you can see that the osteoprogenitor cell, the bone stem cell, becomes the osteoblast, which becomes the osteocyte. That's why I say there's not really four cell types. There's two. But the one we haven't mentioned is the osteoclast. Osteoclasts are strange-looking cells. They're multinucleate, meaning they have more than one nuclei. And they release like acids, and, and they actually will degrade and break down bone, which might sound bad, but let me kind of explain why it doesn't have to be. So let's answer this question, though. No, the difference between osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts, they build bone. Osteoclasts break down, bone down. So, but osteoblasts, they have to take calcium from your body fluids, or, you know, your tissues and interstitial fluid and blood and stuff, and move it into bone to build it. So osteoblasts are going to lower blood calcium levels while they build bone. That's why osteoclasts, you would think breaking down bone would always be a bad thing. But number one, K 
calcium is very important for, I mean, every nerve transmission, you know, for, for the release of neurotransmitters, every time a muscle contracts, like calcium plays a big role in acid base balance. So your body says, yeah, I would love to have really strong bones into my eighties and nineties, but I got to keep the heart beating now. So you've got to be able to release calcium from bone and you do that by breaking it down. The other um, good thing about breaking bone down, this idea of bone remodeling, is it's like tearing down an old bridge to build a new one. If your bone, if your bone never got replaced, it would literally fall apart, just like an old bridge would. Um, you know, my my family farm when I was a kid had a bridge that definitely needed to be replaced. It was getting really old. So, so those don't always think of bone breakdown as a bad thing. Now, if it happens, if bone breakdown happens more often for a long period of time than building up new bone, yeah, you'll develop weak bones, osteopenia, potentially leading into osteoporosis, and that's not good. But um, so, which increases bone density? So, osteoblast would increase bone density. Osteoclast would decrease bone density. Which breaks down bone to increase blood calcium levels? That's what osteoclasts do. So remember that your bone cells play a big role in maintaining calcium homeostasis. So if, if, your, if your blood calcium levels are getting too high, osteoblasts will start to store it in bones. If your, oste- if your blood calcium levels are getting too low, osteoclasts will break down bone to go get it. That's why it's really important to, you know, to be physically active, to make sure your hormones are all working, which we'll cover here at the end. It's important to consume enough calcium and other things too. Like uh, that, This is a topic for nutrition, but vitamin D, magnesium, vitamin K all play major roles in bone health. But if every, think of it this way, every single day, you don't get enough of these bone, these bone um, nutrients, especially calcium. Your body will leach it from your bones. So every day, if you don't get enough calcium in your diet today, magnesium, et cetera, your bones are going to be slightly weaker tomorrow than they were today. That's just, that's just life. So that's why it's very, very important to take care of your bones. <clears throat> All right. Um, what, where are the key locations of red bone marrow in adults? So when you're young, all your bone marrow is red. But as we get older, once we've already, we've, we've already built up our, bl- our pool of blood cells, now we need to just maintain them. A lot of the red bone marrow, like in the shafts of your long bones and stuff, it becomes yellow marrow, which is fat. That's why dogs like to get inside of bones. So, and that yellow marrow can become red marrow if it needs, need to be again. But um, red bone marrow primarily stays in the epiphyses of your long bones, so the ends of your long bones, but your flat bones are the key. So your sternum, and most important, because it's most clinically significant, is going to be your, os- your coxal bones, your, um, your ilium, your, your pelvic bones, because that's where they'll go and get bone marrow for a, from a bone marrow biopsy or a bone marrow transplant. So, so that's where you're going to find red bone in adults. So you got like your sternum, your ribs, like these flat, thin bones, but especially in the pelvis. And if you, and if you put the three pelvic bones together, just so you know, it's called the os coxa, O-S space C-O-X-A, or the coxal bones. But I, you know, they're the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis is the name of the individual bones. Okay. <clears throat> What's the key difference between the periosteum and endosteum? These are the linings that cover your bones. The periosteum is the skin around, peri means around. Uh, The periosteum is the skin around the outside of your bones. The endosteum is this incomplete layer of cells that line the inside of your bones, the marrow cavity and inside your spongy bone, that kind of stuff. So periosteum, think outside of bones, lining on the outside of bones. Endosteum, think lining inside of bones. All right. Um, what else about that? The periosteum, very pain sensitive. That There's a lot of pain fibers there. That's why you can actually, like a hairline fracture, you can tear that periosteum. And in some cases, uh, a hairline fracture will hurt way worse than, than a massive compound fracture. So kind of interesting. All right. <clears throat> know the basics of bone formation. So hyaline cartilage framework, blood vessels arrive, form bones. So just real big picture. All your, your bones start, especially when we're, when we're talking about this endochondral ossification, but how, how most of your bones form. They start as a cartilage model, a cartilage framework. Hopefully you remember from the histology section that cartilage is avascular and bone is vascular. So you start with this hyaline cartilage framework. The blood vessels show up. Where those blood vessels show up, cartilage starts to be, you know, be replaced by bone. That's why you, you develop these ossification centers. So right, the shaft of a long bone would be where the primary ossification center is. The ends would then form these secondary ossification centers. So you start with a hyaline cartilage framework, the blood vessels show up, now cartilage is being replaced by bone. But what's really cool, if you think about bone growth, think about a growth plate, basically what's happening is a layer of cartilage is being laid down and a layer of cartilage is becoming bone. And as long as the cartilage stays ahead of the bone, your bones are going to keep growing and get longer. You still have a growth plate. But as you get older, and it's sex hormone, so puberty starts to stop bone growth. Uh, you know, obviously you have growth spurts and stuff, but but your sex hormones actually cause bone to be uh, cartilage to be replaced by bone faster than new cartilage being laid down. So your sex hormones will actually lead to the point where once that once the bone catches up to the cartilage, there's no longer a growth plate left, and your bones are going to be done getting longer. Um, estrogen. 
will lead to an increase in bone growth early, but it also will lead to an earlier closure of the, of the growth plates. So that's why um, girls, you know, as they become women, might get taller than boys the same age, but they won't get as tall in the end for the average woman because the female sex hormones will, will cause bone lengthening to stop earlier. So the closure of these growth plates will be sooner. So that's, that's kind of my favorite part of bone growth is this idea that cartilage is trying to stay one step ahead of bone. Once it can no longer do that, the growth place is gone. And that's what leads to our next question. What is the difference between epiphyseal cartilage slash plate and an epiphyseal line? So epiphyseal cartilage or epiphyseal plate, that's your growth plate people talk about. Um, once it's gone, once bone catches cartilage, there's going to be a line there where now it's all bone. So once like on an x-ray, if you, if you look at an x-ray of somebody's hand and wrist and their pelvis, you can say, you know, it's estimated you have this much bone growth left because these growth plates aren't closed because they kind of close in a step-by-step -step fashion. Um, once that's, one, if you take an x-ray of someone and the growth plates are gone and all you see is the line where that plate used to be, growth plate used to be, you now know that bone growth has ended in that person. Now, are the bones going to remodel every day? Yes. Can they change shape? Um, if they gain weight, they'll get thicker and more dense, but bone lengthening has ceased. Once that epiphyseal plate be or growth plate, <clears throat> excuse me, becomes an epiphyseal line. All right, next, what percent of your bone is protein? I like to say that your bones are, it's 70-30. 70% the minerals, the um, inorganic substances like uh, calcium primarily, molybdenum, borum, manganese, magnesium, all those, 30% protein, and that protein is collagen. So if you ever want to try something fun, uh, there's a you know a bone lab I, I'll share with you guys, but... Um, Take some, take some chicken bones, clean them up, and put it like a chicken drumstick, and put them in vinegar for a while. You'll see that the bones get real. That'll actually um, get rid of a lot of the minerals, and just that bony framework will be left, and you'll see that it gets real flexible. So that's kind of cool. So what percent of your bone is protein? It's 30%, and it's primarily collagen. So the hormones we'll cover more when we get to the endocrine system, but uh, what are the effects of calcitonin and parathyroid hormone on bone density and on blood calcium levels? So your osteoblasts and osteoclasts, they don't just work on their own. They're told what to do. So calcitonin, very important hormone when you're young. Calcitonin will tell your, your bone stem cells and your osteoblasts to build new bone, but it will take the calcium from your blood. Parathyroid hormone will say our blood calcium levels are getting low. We better go get it. So it tells osteoclasts to, to uh, break down bone. So calcitonin tells osteoblasts to build bone, but that takes calcium from your bloodstream. Oste or parathyroid hormone tells osteoclasts to break down bone, but that puts blood calcium uh, or puts calcium back in your bloodstream. So when we get to the endocrine system, we'll also cover the hormone calcitriol, which works with parathyroid hormone. But I just wanted to quickly introduce that topic here because we're talking about. I want you to make sure you reframe your thinking about bones. Uh, they are a they're a mineral storage depot. They're a calcium reservoir more than anything else. You want really strong bones, and you don't want to get fractures, and you don't want to get osteoporosis process. But your body is much more concerned about the other things calcium does. Your body will dip into your calcium stores in your bones anytime it needs it. So, okay, that's bone tissue. Be blessed.